Biomutant, the new weird action RPG set in a world of mutated abilities. The team that made this one seemed to just cram just about every mechanic they could think of into this game with lots of interesting and often kind of clunky systems around them. While I've been lucky to play the game a little bit early, I certainly noticed a lot that felt a bit strange at first and eventually, many hours later, when I actually did get the picture, I wish I'd kind of understood it all a bit sooner. And so, to help you guys out with your opening Biomutant experience, I put together 10 things I wish on you before playing Biomutant, so let's get started. Firstly, the thing we're all going to be looking at when we first load up the game, that character creator. You'll notice just how impactful it seems to be when choosing your build, since it seems to affect your physical shape and size, as well as the raw stats associated with your character. How much does this matter though, is the question I was wondering at the time. Well the thing is, it only really matters in the early game, and a lot less in the late game. Like I said, you're picking your base stats for what I would assume is a planned build you're going to go for. and then the short selection of classes which affect your weapons that you'll begin the game with. Well, these things matter as you begin the game, but ultimately when you level up, you get to buff up one of those six main stats by 10 every single time, meaning you can continue down the path you started with at creation or balance yourself out very easily. Those weapons that you begin with are not going to be weapons you'll be using in a few hours time. So the starting stats are definitely going to matter a lot less as you level up. It's just kind of a nudge into the direction you're planning to get you going, so don't overly worry about this. But another early choice we're going to have to make might make you wonder how much does this matter is which faction to join. It's very clear one side is apparently dark and the other side is apparently light, but this option will stick with you throughout the game and will actually affect the ending you get. While you can do bad and good things in the game on a smaller scale, the overall faction choice will greatly affect the gameplay. Since you'll be taking over different sections of the land based on which faction you're with or against, Against, and if you're, say, a light or a player, well, dark aura characters will naturally like you less. It also affects things like the order that you fight the world eaters in, as explained uh, early on in the game, but no matter which way you go, you'll still have to fight them, and that was something we were wondering about. Since the dark aura faction wants to let the world eaters do their thing, we were worried that you wouldn't actually get to see those fights if you were a dark aura player. You do, you just let them live after. Part of that main story and ending, though, without any spoilers, is to choose specific people you want to do something Thing with you. If you're light aura, the dark aura characters are going to reject you, so that's also something to think about. This certainly feels like a two playthrough game just to see both sides to me. However, for my third point, interestingly, you can actually swap factions at any time. By visiting another faction's main stronghold, you can go meet their leader and join them. Then, by fulfilling their requests, eventually you'll unlock their faction weapon. There's six factions, and each come with their own special weapon to unlock, so whether you're light or dark, you can still join everyone temporarily to go get that weapon unlocked, and then make the story-related faction choice all the same. Alright then, with all that faction talk out of the way, let's get into some nitty-gritty mechanics and systems you need to know about. Firstly, with the crafting and modding. As you find weapons, armor, and parts in the world, you'll be able to take them apart and craft new creations. By scrapping an item, you'll get in return various resources that you need to mod equipment. With those resources ready, you'll be able to take equipment parts and cram them together into something new. It's actually a really cool and pretty effective system. By changing the barrel on my gun, I was able to change it from just physical damage to suddenly fire freezing shots that will damage and slow or even stun enemies. So through modding, you can get yourself elemental damage on your weapons early on. While you can find various qualities of parts to mod your weapons and armor, you'll likely be finding a lot of lower quality crap as you go. So feel free to either scrap these to get parts or save them to trade them. This is where shopkeepers come in. So each faction will have outposts all over the world and their main stronghold too. At these places, you'll be able to find various shopkeepers that offer you different things. There's melee weapons and parts to buy, ranged parts, clothing vendors, and even mount vendors too. What's great is how you can trade with literally any vendor and sell anything you want to them to get some currency, and then buy, say, a specific part of a weapon to use with your own to create a new one. It's a great idea to check if there's any parts that could be more powerful than what you're currently running, and mod your equipment for the benefits. Or maybe you want to buy some armor to fill out the many empty slots you're going to begin the game with. We have a chest, leg, shoulders, head, face, and back armor slots to consider. Each outpost does seem to have a mount you can consider as well, like, say, this demon goat that I found. You just need to go buy the certificate, and then boom, it's 
it's yours. On the other hand, you don't actually need to buy a mount at any point. Very early into the game, you will be presented with a side quest just after the first fort capture. Here, you will see a pit plant, which will hold the purple pips that you just need to slide under the bush to grab. And in exchange for these pips, you can tame free roaming mounts you find in the world. We get a very basic one to get us going in the main story, so it's not like you need to buy one to get started. But as you progress the main story, we will unlock the different transport methods we need to progress the four main regions of the world. These are the vehicles like the Goo Glide, which lets us jet around the water in the east, or the Mekton, which gives us a way to progress the oil wastes of the west. When you unlock these vehicles, it basically opens up the region associated for exploration. And all around that region will be hidden wreck boxes to find, which will provide a lot of cool customization for the vehicle of that region, and there's a lot to find. It's a very satisfying and good system that encourages exploration and unlocking those cosmetics through gameplay. Speaking of exploration though, let's talk about abilities and how to unlock them. In Biomutant, we have two versions of magic, if that's what we're gonna call it, the physical mutations and the psionic abilities. By finding bio points, we can trade those for different mutations, the better the more expensive, and by finding psi points, we can do the same but with psionic abilities instead. These are found all over the world. The bio points come from these like bio pods, distinct by their green glow, and the psi points come from these totems that look like a little teepee. Both of these are best found through exploration and searching the many ruins or hidden areas in the world, so your exploration really is rewarded well as they unlock new abilities and greater strength. Outside of these cosmetic and ability points to find, there's also a lot of loot and collectibles too. Each area and town will have a little list at the bottom left that appears to let you know what you can find and what still remains. This list is called the Area Objectives, and importantly, you can find superb loot in tons of these little areas. So it's well worth searching to find these because they're going to be powerful cosmetics or big armor upgrades or weapon pieces. You don't have to fill these out and get everything. If you do spot some good loot listed in an objective list, then you know that that's going to be worth looking for. All right, combat then was a weird one for me. The game is a bit rough around the edges. Sure, it has a lot going for it, like I said for the start, but it takes a bit to get into. What clicked for me finally with this is just how close this combat is to the Batman Arkham series, if you've ever played that. We circle and move through packs of enemies, performing quick attacks and combos, gadget usage, evasive maneuvers. Biomutant feels exactly the same. We leap over enemies, we get that spider sense style warning for an incoming attack, we have mini combos ourselves, and instead of gadgets, we are using mutations and psionic abilities. The enemies come in similar forms as well. We've got shield users that we've got to break through, or the guys with guns with the red lasers to avoid. The key difference here is just the bigger variety in the enemies and how they work. The big boys are a lot bigger, and our special abilities are a lot stronger. Oh, and we also have guns. Uh, sorry, Batman. Looks like we're going the red HUD route. Once I understood how I'm meant to approach the combat in this way, I felt like I was able to take on bigger challenges. Here I just hit level 9 and taking on level 12s and 13s, which should be well out of my reach and they do hit hard. But with this combat system, I can keep evading and avoiding damage and dealing my own slowly until I come out on top. By continuously using my abilities whenever they're ready and using ranged weapons or quick melee attacks before moving away, we can just keep going. It feels great. Specific combat advice would be how there's six melee weapons you can find in the game and they all come with their own playstyles as well as unarmed and each weapon comes with its own set of combos that you start with and then more you can unlock. By performing three different combos successfully in a fight you'll suddenly be able to use the powerful Wung Fu which gives us a period of huge damage and fast combos boosting our slam AoE, aerial punch combos, range attacks and more. So whenever you're using a new weapon make sure to go quickly check which combos it has and how to do them and maybe even unlock some new ones too. Then try to cycle through three different combos to get a quick one foo off for burst damage whenever possible. But there you have it, 10 things in Biomutant that you should benefit from knowing that was kind of more than 10 to be honest, but like 10 topics anyway. I hope this video helped you. If it did or was interesting, be sure to leave a like. I hope you guys are excited for or are enjoying Biomutant. I've had mixed feelings about this one as I've played since there's so many great ideas, but the execution still feels a bit sloppy to me. The movement is very floaty, but I feel the 
the more I've played this game, the more I've enjoyed and appreciated. I do think the devs have got something special here, and I kind of look forward to seeing more from them in the future. Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye